Well, we're going to tell you two little stories. And I'm going to begin by telling you about my transformation <laughs> from fearless Amazon urban pioneer to Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> so let me just uh, let you know right up front that we did not set out to renovate an historic home. We were not about that at all. We had this dream, and our little dream was to have a um, communal family, kind of like um, a living history museum to the 60s. <laughs> and um, so to do this, we needed a big, cheap house. So we found the big, cheap house. And when we got into it, we realized that the reason that the big cheap house was cheap is because it did not have certain amenities that you might be accustomed to. For example, there was nothing in the house that you would particularly recognize as a kitchen. There was a room in which meals were prepared. And it is in that room that my transformation took place. So I must tell you a little bit about the what we euphemistically called our kitchen. This was a room that had five doors and three windows. The only built-in items when we bought the house was a sink and, and the little cabinet that the sink was in. There were no other cabinets, no other counters, uh, so that was our workspace. The walls at some point had been covered in barn wood. So I just want you to take a second and think about how filthy barn wood would get in a room in which you cooked. The woodwork had been painted olive green. That was very, very popular in the 60s. So the woodwork had been painted olive green. And then the ceiling, the part that still had a ceiling, uh, had peeling paint on it that just kept trickling down. And so we just had to keep our pots covered at all times. Uh, now, I really like to cook, and there are five adults living in our house, and we all like to eat. So you can imagine that we wanted to get on this kitchen just as soon as we could afford to do so. And so five years later, <laughs> five years later, the day came, and we were ready to start. We bought our house with a friend, Mary Senek, and so the three of us went into the uh, kitchen in full battle gear. We had sledgehammer, we had hammers, we had crowbars, and the three, and you know, we had bandanas on our faces, you know. So the three of us go in and we start, and Mary was the one who started this. She takes a big whop at the wall and says, and that's for the guy who stole my bicycle. <laughs> and then I thought, well, that's a pretty good idea. And so I took one and said, and that's for the guy who broke our leaded glass window. And, you know, from there we kind of went on to yeah, ex-friends, bad bosses, former husbands, and things like that. Um, by the end of the day, uh, we were, the room was empty, and so were we. And we figured that we had uh, saved about $1,000 on demolition and about $1,000 on therapy that we no longer needed. Uh, so now it's time for the woodwork. Did I mention it was olive green? Yes. Okay. Woodwork. Olive green, the woodwork. And there was a lot of them. Remember all those doors? Lots of woodwork. So Lamar kind of did the manly thing and took out all off all of the wood that could be removed and stripped. And then I had the job of stripping in place all the rest of the woodwork, and there was a lot of it. So I started on it with the tools that I had used on furniture, and I figured after a week or so that this was going to take longer than my life expectancy. <laughs> um, so I needed bigger tools. I needed more resources. So I got the heat stripper. Now, heat gun, heat stripper, if you've never had the pleasure, uh, the way this works is it's some little gizmo that either blows incredibly hot air or it has little coils. And you hold it just next to the paint, but not right on the paint. So then when the paint blisters or catches fire, then you, um, <laughs> it happens, it happens, okay? You're not, you know, you don't, and then you, you, know, you scrape the paint off and you hope that that scalding hot paint falls on the floor and not on your leg, uh, which doesn't always happen. But that process is then followed by dangerous chemicals to take off the rest of it. 
And then following the dangerous, dangerous chemicals, you go to sanding. So this took many months, and I got most of it done. And then I had just one thing left to do, and that was the stairway. We had decided it would be a great idea to take the walls out around the maid's service stairway and open up the kitchen and use that area for shelving. And so I started, you know, a stairway is really sort of like the stripper's equivalent of um, climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> and it had been painted gray. So I, I thought, oh, so sick of this. But I am not a quitter. I am not a quitter, but I did sort of mentally remove Fearless and Amazon from my Fearless Amazon urban uh, whatever, pioneer. So I get up on my hands and knees and I do the heat stripping and then I do it again with the dangerous chemicals and then I do it again with the sanders, all of those little steps, all of those little moldings, all those little corners. I'm just sanding my life out. And finally, I get down to the bottom of the stairs, and I looked at my work, and I stood up and said, as God is my witness, I am never getting on my hands and knees on these stairs again. <laughs> and I haven't. <laughs> So, so when we started renovating uh, our house, um, you know, Angie's list wasn't even thought of at the time. So um, we had to rely on friends and neighbors and the old house catalog to give us tips on um, how, to, how to renovate, how to do plumbing and how to strip and, and things like that. So um, uh, we went to our friends first to, to try to uh, get some of the uh, other major projects finished that uh, we wanted to complete. One being the exterior painting of the house. Um, we knew a friend, his name was Dave, and he was a school teacher and, and painted um, uh, interiors during the summers, during the summer months as extra income. So we contacted Dave and asked him to do the exterior of our house. He was re really reluctant because he'd never had any experience doing that. Uh, didn't know anything about exterior paints and hadn't done anything in the elements before. So uh, in full disclosure, he said that interiors is what he did, but um, he would agree to do part of the work if we sold him or bartered with him a sofa that he'd been eyeing in our living room. Oh my gosh. So we agreed to that um, because we needed the house done and um, we wanted it done pretty quickly. So um, the start date was given. Dave came with his extension ladder and uh, I suggested that he put it up and start uh, at the top of the house this is a three level storied house and started to work, work his way down. So he put the ladder against the, uh, the house, started to climb up and then started getting anxious. And the, the higher he climbed, the more his an the anxiety um, uh, took into place and he started shaking. The higher he got, he never got to the top. He never put on a bit of paint. And he came down and said, I just can't do it. And I said, fine. So he left, and I'm sure he went home to his sofa that he'd just gotten oh! to chill out. We, we, we did eventually get paid for, for that. So uh, and needless to say, I was looking for another painter. And um, so I had contacted Randy, whose mother uh, had worked for me as a bank teller at, at a time. And um, I knew that he had been a painter before, so I uh, contacted Randy and he came over and we agreed on the price and everything and everything was hunky-dory. Um, so we started on a particular date and he brought two ladders and uh, a bunch of professional paint brushes and uh, tarps, you know, and, and he had those white Dickies painter pants on, so I thought, you know, perfect. This is a perfect, perfect um, uh, solution to our, our painting project. So, so we started um, 
doing the exterior painting and um, after a couple of weeks it started slowing down. Uh, he would come for half of a day and uh, not show up at all and um, after that was happening for a while then a, a girlfriend showed up and we didn't understand why this girlfriend was there. Uh, she started to help him um, but you could tell she had, didn't have any experience because of the, you know, the way she held her brush. And, and when she got paint on her, she was just uh, totally freaked out about the whole thing. So, so we knew that something was going on. Um, I found out later that our housekeeper, uh, whose name was Billy, was making passes at Randy. And I'm sure it was the white dicky painter's pants that attracted him and everything. So um, Randy had brought his girlfriend over to give him protection, uh, at least, or at least uh, give Randy the signal, or uh, Billy the signal that he just wasn't interested. Story is that um, at one of these uh, previous times, um, Billy had offered to take Randy home, and that was because he had car trouble, and that was another pro uh, uh, indicator of the times that he was delinquent or no show in coming to our house. But Billy didn't take him directly home. He uh -oh. took him to a cornfield or something like that. And um, um, Randy was just so incensed by the whole thing, they got into a fight, and uh, Randy beat Billy up. And uh, beat, uh, Billy eventually got him to his home. So um, soon, soon after that, um, I heard from the neighbors that there was all this ruckus that was going on at our house. And uh, Randy and his girlfriend had been painting. Billy showed up to clean our house. Randy started chasing Billy up the street. The neighbors are hearing all this happening, and um, needless to say, I fired Billy. Uh, he wasn't that good of a house cleaner anyway. And um, Randy got back on to the job, but only two days later, I got a call, telephone call from him, and he was telling me, uh, telephoning me from the hospital. Um, he was painting uh, on the second floor, uh, the eaves to the house, and his ladder fell. His ladder dropped and he ended up in the hospital and uh, he was so proud because he said that he didn't spill any paint. Uh, his girl called the um, uh, 911 and all these emergency vehicles came and everything and uh, took, him, took him to the hospital and he told me that he just wouldn't be able to finish the job. So here I am uh, without a painter, without a house cleaner. Uh, looking for new ones, and finally I did contact another person, I think it was a um, recommendation from a neighbor, who was um, com competent, he finished the job, he uh, was timely, he was skillful, and he was a felon. Yeah, and that's the way it had. I was really happy with him, and uh, was happy with the job that he had completed. He finished the project for me, and uh, if Angie's list was available at the time, um, I would have given him the A.